If you're interested in spine nutrition research, I think some of the, the key things that you need to think about is really where do you want to hang your hat? And so we talk a lot about that even in grad school as we go through with our students. Do you want to be involved in basic research? Do you want to be involved in applied research? And to me, they both interlap and or they both overlap, but they uh, also are, are independent of each other. So with that being said, right, do you want to know really the big whys and what's happening and how it's happening? Or are you more interested in just the big picture? Uh, because both have value in being part of swine research, but they have different objectives and outcomes. Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Laura Greiner, the director of the Iowa Pork Industry Center and associate professor in animal science at Iowa State University. So Laura, I would assume most people listening are familiar with you as you were the host of the main swine podcast in the past for so long, but for those who aren't, would you mind giving the audience a brief introduction about yourself? Sure, I'm happy to do that today. So uh, as Clayton mentioned, I'm Laura Greiner, and I am currently an associate professor here at Iowa State University. I've been in this role for about six years, so I predominantly teach. I do a little bit of extension work, and uh, I also do research. In addition to that, I'm the director of the Iowa Pork Industry Center, which is, of course, part of the extension team here on campus. Uh, Prior to my life uh, here at Iowa State, I was at Carthage Innovative Swine Solutions for about 13 years and oversaw the research there. Awesome. So let's talk about a topic that is all too relevant to me, at least, and that's starting a career in swine nutrition research. So I've been involved in swine research for around seven-ish years now, and I still feel like I have a lot to learn within this industry. So coming from someone with much more experience than I have, at least, let's just start off with a few tips. What advice would you give to someone beginning a career in swine nutrition research? Yes, yeah, certainly. So if you're interested in swine nutrition research, I think some of the, the key things that you need to think about is really where do you want to hang your hat? And so we talk a lot about that even in grad school as we go through with our students. Do you want to be involved in basic research? Do you want to be involved in applied research? And to me, they both interlap and or they both overlap, but they uh, also are, are independent of each other. So with that being said, right, do you want to know really the big whys and what's happening and how it's happening, or are you more interested in just the big picture? Uh, Because both have value in being part of swine research, but they have different objectives and outcomes. And so if you're really trying to decide where you want to go, I think that's the first question you want to ask is, which direction do I want to be involved in? And then second of all, I think you certainly want to look at what areas of nutrition are you most interested in? Some of my students are very focused in protein and amino acids. Others really want to look more at just guilt development, and others want to look at sustainability or immune function. And again, they all overlap. They all have pieces where they can connect, but at the same time, there's very unique aspects to all. And so um, really when you're starting to think about where or how you want to approach swine nutrition research, you need to kind of maybe compartmentalize a little bit so then you're ready to dive in and and get going on what you want to do. Would you say it's best to specialize in that regard? Like for me, for instance, most of my experience is within the wean to finish side. Um, Or would you say it's better to kind of dip your toe into all the other pools out there when it comes to guilt development, sow farm research, um, lab molecular stuff, Um, Would you say, so yeah, I guess, would you say it's better to specialize and really, really understand one aspect before kind of branching out then to these others? I think you ask a great question. So when I went through graduate school many moons ago, one of the conversations we had a lot of was specializing, that you needed to be a specialist. When you graduated, you were going to be that specialist and that was going to be the rest of your life. So choose carefully is what we always got told in grad school. I don't believe that's the case today. Uh, Honestly, if I look at my time at Carthage, I was involved in a variety of things uh, from health to production to repro to nutrition. And while I would have said my background was nutrition, my focus in grad school was immunology. So the reality of it was, was health and nutrition went hand in hand when I started at Carthage. But I learned so much across the board, right? I went from nurseries Uh, which was my predominant grad school work, to sows, and I loved sows. And 
again, when we think about swine production, it's not just a singular piece of production, right? We have to think about the animal from conception, conception to market and every piece in between there and even beyond market, right? What is it doing in terms of meat quality, et cetera? And so while it's very easy to say you need to specialize, the reality of it is, is you don't want to get so narrow-minded that you miss what you're really trying to accomplish or how other pieces may play into what you're studying or what you're looking into. Um, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but the reality of it is, is if I decide I want to look at, at this piece in the grow finish portion of, of pig development, there might be something that happened in the nursery or in utero that could have impacted what we're seeing over here. And so you really have to know the big picture um, to really get involved. And so while I would say, yes, when you're in grad school or when you're an undergraduate, you tend to specialize and you tend to focus. When you go out, you are still likely going to specialize. Um, many of our people that are involved in research are involved in allied industry, right? And they're working for companies that are selling specific products. And so they are very focused on certain aspects, right? What do those products do? What biological function? Where in production do we utilize those technologies? Uh, but they also have to look at the big picture and understand how all those other pieces overlay into what they're, what they're trying to work through. So um, specialize, but yet keep, keep the big picture in mind. Kemen calls all swine experts. You already know the key to a profitable swine operation is healthy, productive pigs. Our team of swine experts are driven by curiosity to create science-backed ingredients and solutions that help you maintain feed and water quality, improve intestinal health, optimize nutrition, and eliminate pathogens. Learn more today by diving in at kemen.com forward slash swine. Uh, another question I have is, so there's a lot of research that comes out. A lot of different universities are publishing research as well. And it can be a little bit overwhelming when trying to stay up to date with everything and try to make sure you have everything accounted for when trying to figure out what next to study. So what would you say is one of the best ways to effectively stay updated with the latest research? That's a great question. We have so much tech, so much information coming to us every day that sometimes it can be very overwhelming. So I find that I, I get newsletters that come in with just little brief, you know, here's what's happening in different aspects of production or in, in swine business as a whole, or maybe it's an ASV update on some health, just so I can get little sound bites, if you will. Um, I also encourage individuals to think about podcasts. Uh, they are a great way if you're driving in your car, a lot of us like audio. Um, even while I'm in here grading papers or doing things like that, I've always got something playing in my ears. And so it's a way to, to keep up without maybe always opening a book and, and reading. Um, but of course, periodically looking at your journals or just doing a quick search uh, can be helpful. Um, I know AI is still working through all of its kinks, but sometimes we can gather some very quick information using some of the newer AI technology that's out there. Uh, we found some really interesting ones where I can pull a topic and it can connect all the dots to here's all the other papers that are related to this topic. And, and that to me is very valuable if I'm starting to explore an idea and wanting to figure out what's been done and, you know, when that work was done and, and start to kind of piece together the relevancy or the need for that additional research work. Gotcha. I would say, yeah, I feel like I have it easy in this regard because with the latest research, it all just comes to me <laughs> and I just go and That's talk right. to everybody and I don't have to really go looking for it. That's right. So going from there, um, when you're also entering this industry and you're trying to meet new people, there it can also be kind of difficult to figure out where to start when it comes to networking and just becoming acquainted with all the different players within the industry. So how would you say is that one of the better ways to begin networking as a young individual entering swine nutrition research? I will tell you, it's great to have mentors in this industry. Uh, your mentors, obviously, through undergraduate or graduate programs might be your advisors or your faculty mentors, but they should be connecting you to others in the industry. And hopefully, as you go to meetings and elsewhere, you're starting to find other individuals that, that you feel comfortable reaching out to and, and developing a mentorship. 
as they develop that, as you develop that mentorship with them, then they should be able to kind of help connect you to other people or other key resources. In addition to that, one of the things I always remind people is don't be able or don't be afraid to reach out to people um, that you're following on papers, right? If there's a topic that, that somebody's working on and you're really interested in it, don't be afraid to email them and, and talk to them. Uh, I even found it going through my early professional development was you kind of develop this starstruck attitude, right? Of, oh, look, I can't talk to that person because they're so well known or, you know, this is what they're doing and I'm, I feel intimidated. We're all just people. We're all a very small community in many ways. And I think, you know, we're all willing to certainly help bring the next group of professionals along with us, because as we always talk about, someone has to replace us somewhere along the lines and we want to see everybody be successful. So I always tell people those two things, right? Find some good mentors that you feel can help get you involved and and help build that confidence and, and potentially give you some key connections in the industry, but then also don't be afraid to reach out, whether it's through LinkedIn or just general email. Uh, Talk to them, ask them some specific questions that you have about their work and really start to engage in those conversations. Awesome. Well, I believe that's all the time we have. So thank you again, Laura, for coming on the show and sharing all this advice with us. Yeah. Happy to do so, Clayton. Have a great day. You too. And everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com and don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channels so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week.